That's cool. We wanted to show you a couple graphics. Here is a screenshot of a sonogram that Marie says is allegedly her fetus. Right. She says that she's 12 weeks pregnant. Uh -huh. We weren't sure if this was even her sonogram. So this is a 12-week-old fetus. And then we talked to two doctors. They looked at this sonogram photo. They think that she's around 20 to 22 weeks pregnant. Yeah. If that is hers, she's almost twice as far along as she says. Exactly. exactly. This is all about the parents. Definitely. All right. Okay. All right, thanks. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. My daughter told me she's pregnant. She's 15. She showed us something that she claims her parents are not aware of. This is an alleged sonogram she's taken. Out of control. She's made terroristic threats against you to have you murdered. And calling all the shots. She said, the reason I'm laughing all the time when they're telling me something is because I've got the power. They mess with me. They're going to pay. She took your car. There's a lot of scratches. What have you been hitting? You're missing the point. The conversation is, you stole my car. You've put up security cameras, I guess, because you just want to watch her commit crimes. I don't know. You don't do a damn thing about it. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. John say their 15-year-old daughter Marie has become distant and angry and really is just no longer the charming, talented, honor roll child from just a few years ago. Now, Marie's name and face were plastered all over missing posters and the news this year because the teen ran away three times, sold stolen items, and took their car. She doesn't have a license. She just took the car. So Mary Beth and John installed these security cameras in their home, took their daughter's phone, removed her bedroom door and Wi-Fi, and even bolted her window shut. But these parents say Marie still manages to just leave whenever she wants to. Take a look. My daughter Marie is out of control. My daughter is turning my life upside down. These are bad people. That's why I'm worried. My daughter has completely changed. She's no longer the little girl that I raised. She's hostile, she's distant, deceitful, dishonest. You cheat us, you make a mess, you cheat. When she was little, she loved to dance, she loved to sing. My daughter Marie was a good student and seemed to like school, but now she seems to be in a nosedive. School just started six weeks ago and she already has 32 absent in our house. We always want to have a camera to see if she sneak out, what time she sneak out. We cannot trust her. We ask her point blank, where have you been? What have you been doing? Who was with you? And we get no answers. My daughter is a chronic liar. Marie has been shoplifting. This is from the store. A few months ago, our daughter stole the keys to one of our cars and took it out joyriding in the middle of the night. At 4.30 a.m., we confronted her at the door. I was very mad. I slapped her face, and she doesn't care. A few months ago, Marie ran away from home. Our daughter stole $100 cash from her mother, also stole her mother's passport, and used it to pose as her own mother to rent the Airbnb. We notified the police. They put out a missing child alert. Thousands of people already calling me, saying, where's your daughter? What happened to your daughter? We saw the news. The detective told us you can sue her for a fraud. Marie returned home. We confronted her at the door and demanded her cell phone and her backpack. She refused to give up either one of them. We're struggling, pulling each other. I took that phone and she bit me. We tried everything, but it's like nothing works. Well, sadly, the story doesn't end there. Mary Beth and John say their daughter claims she is now pregnant. But they're not sure what to believe at this point. At one point, we discovered that my daughter had a number of condoms in her room. We took them away from her immediately. She then claimed that if she ever got pregnant, it was going to be our fault because we had taken her condoms. A few weeks ago, my daughter told me she's pregnant. It blew my mind. I screamed, I cried a lot. 
I was very upset. It was a mixture of anger and helplessness. Our daughter sat there silently. Her mother took our daughter to a clinic to determine the status of her pregnancy. And under state law, that clinic does not have to share the information with the parents, and Marie asked that it not be shared. At this moment, we want to know if she's really pregnant or not. You're gonna regret what I'm gonna do soon to you. That's why I need to know if you're pregnant. My daughter can't even take care of herself. How is she going to raise a child? I don't know what to do. I talk to our pastors and we pray for this. God answer, Dr. Phil, he's the answer of our prayers. Well, uh, I'm glad you're here, and I assume you guys are glad you're here because you're looking for reinforcement, right? You're yes, sir. For help. Yes. You're in two very different situations, and I'm gonna talk to you, I'm gonna talk to you guys as a pair, of parents, and then I'm gonna to talk to you separately because there are some differences between you here. Now, Mary Beth, at this point, you're not sure whether she's pregnant or not. No, all I have is that pregnancy test that, you know, she showed it to me, and every time we go to the hospital. Because she, she showed you a positive pregnancy test. Yes. But then she also showed you a negative pregnancy test. That's from the clinic, because she said she put a water on it. She doesn't wanna show that uh -huh. You know, because she doesn't want to take us there. Well, and then there have been writings in her diary, right? Yes. In her diary, right, she's ready to be a mom. Like, she want to buy diapers, baby shower and everything. In the diary entry, there's a shopping list. Yes. One of the things is a shopping list. She's written, here's all the things I need being pregnant. I need diapers, newborn clothes, pacifiers, hospital bag, car seat, stroller, shower seats. It's, all, it's, it's a wish list for a mom. All these, here's all the things I need. Yes. Um, if she's pregnant, how far along is she? Uh, even her, I think probably she's now three months. Three uh -huh. months pregnant, maybe uh, 12 or 13 weeks. Okay, 12 or 13 weeks. Okay, prenatal care? Uh, I tried to bring her to the clinic. She doesn't want to. In that way, they can ultrasound. They give a vitamin, something like that. But twice, she declined. So she's getting no prenatal care? No. John, you're the adoptive father here. Yes, I am. Since four years of age. Correct. Okay. And you both describe her as, at one point in her life, for most of her life, being very charming and uh, fun. Yes. Dancing. Yes, she loved to dance. Very outgoing, energetic, uh, engaging child, right? That is correct. When did this turn? I think when she turned like... Uh... Middle school, like end of middle school, like eighth grade, she okay. started. And you think it's because she started hanging out with the wrong crowd? Yes. And now she is the wrong crowd. She is the bad influence. Right. Let me get a handle on this because I, I made a list of according to what you guys say are the most troublesome behaviors, just so I make sure I've got a handle on it. Uh, according to you guys, she's run away three times. She's driven your car without a license. She lies. She shoplifts. She sells stolen items that she didn't steal, but somebody stole, gave to her. She fences them, essentially. Yes. Um, she took your ID, pretended to be you, and rented an Airbnb. She's having unprotected sex, won't go to school, and sneaks out. Yes. Now, out of all of that, I'm, I'm really curious. <laughs> What's been your primary reaction to these things? Every time, just we're like all surprised every time she do something like this. And sometimes I'm questioning like, you know, she'd been in psychiatric hospital. But what do you do about it? We took like cell phone. We take it off from the Wi-Fi. We took her door yeah. so I can always see what she's doing. What are you willing to do? Uh, anything we can to get our daughter back on track because right now she's headed down the wrong path and seems to be in a steep nosedive to nowhere. Well, you're not really willing to do anything because you really haven't done anything. You said we've tried everything. That's not true. The, the, the one thing that she's shown any judgment about whatsoever was taking steps to protect herself sexually. And so you went in her room and took those safeguards and threw them away. But see, we didn't give her those condoms. We didn't give her permission. No, you took them away. Yes, we did. Yeah, we took down more And, you know, she shoplifted the condoms before. She could shoplift again. There was no way to prevent that. Well, but we didn't re why, take why away resources. Why take them away? Um, because you wanted her to have unprotected sex? No, we wanted her to no. stop. Yeah, it's oh, just, that'll yeah. work. <laughs> yes. What can I say? Yeah, we're you know, like, we're not perfect parents. We're still learning as we go. I see your point. I absolutely yeah. do. And I think because probably I'm, we're very conservative people, and I know right now we have to 
I think, face that reality. But so, you understand, taking them away doesn't flip off the sex button. I know. Understood. I mean, you wish it would. I, wish. I mean, honestly, I get it. I guess you wish it would. Right, and you know, we discovered these, and it was like, well, what are we going to do? And we made a snap decision, and we acted on it without thinking of those long-term consequences. Okay. Without thinking yeah. that. Well, I'm just saying this for the future. Yes. Absolutely, and, and I okay. see your point. I understand it. Yeah. Okay. All right, got you. All right, Mary Beth and John say they have seen both positive and negative pregnancy test results from their 15-year-old daughter. But Marie showed one of my producers something that she claims will answer her parents' questions once and for all. I'm going to show you what that is when we come back. She has actually threatened violence against you. She says she's involved with these gangbangers and they will go on an assassin run and come and kill you all. And later, if that ever does come up, you call me second. You call your lawyer first, you call me second. Will do, sir. Thank uh, you. Because you shouldn't be living under that kind of fear. Tuesday. Alexis and her boyfriend have this Bonnie and Clyde thing going on. You had a death pact. So if you got arrested, he's going to shoot you and then himself. We were going to, like, line our heads up and do it at the same time. They are facing felony charges. The cops were chasing us. He bailed and took off running and left you there. He's protected me for so long. He takes a gun into a store, allegedly. This is the guy that's protecting you. Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, he'll do and steal anything. You allowed him to steal from you to the point that you lost your home? That's her problem, not my problem. New Dr. Phil, Wednesday. I get the result from your first checkup. It's negative. That's not true. Then this will tell the truth. Give me water. Why will I give you water? I need pee. So I can pee. You're being smart aleck to us. Okay, we didn't take you to the hospital. Go there, check your urine now. If you prove to me that you're pregnant, then I will believe. Medical appointments, like any expectant mother, prenatal visits. We got a nasty gram saying you missed your appointments. Mary Beth and her husband, John, say they are extremely concerned about their 15-year-old daughter, Marie, who could be pregnant. She says she is, and she says she isn't. The problem is they have seen both positive and negative pregnancy test results, and they're just downright confused. But she showed us something that she claims her parents are not aware of. This is uh, an alleged sonogram that she's taken, and this, this, is her, this is her screensaver on her phone. She's now made it her screensaver on her phone. Have y'all seen this? I have not. No. You haven't seen it? She always hide the phone from us. Yeah. Well, she, um, she showed it to our producer really quick and then snatched it away. Um, and there's a, we got a quick snap of it and, you know, there's a glare and it's kind of fuzzy because it was kind of like, yeah. uh, and, but if you, if you look at it, um, this would be the head and then the body would come down here and back around like that. And she says that she's about 12 weeks. Okay, well, we spoke to some physicians, some OBGYNs, and we had them look at this, as poor an image as it is, and do some comparisons here. And this is, when you look at this, this is a 12-week-old sonogram for a, for a 12-week-old, and then this is the sonogram for a 22-week-old, and they said, in their trained opinion, the formation of the head here suggests that if this is a legitimate sonogram, and it is her sonogram, that she is more likely in the second trimester and 22 weeks pregnant, not 12. Now, who knows if that's her sonogram or not. If it had been a good enough image, we would have been able to um, scan it and test it and see if she pulled it off the internet. 
and disclaimed it as her own because I've done a number of fake pregnancy uh, scams here and they do that. They go on the internet and they pull off fake sonogram pictures and claim them as her own and her picture doesn't have her name. See the code numbers on the others where it has identifying, patient identifying information and all, none of that's on hers. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be hers and it might not. But the trained professionals say that whoever it, it is, they're more likely 22 weeks. And I tell you that to tell you this, if that's true, she's in the 22nd week and there's no prenatal care here. Yeah. And that's just irresponsible, that's just terrible. Um, if she's doing drugs, if she's drinking, and she's not getting proper prenatal care, uh, that could be creating real high-risk scenarios for this child. And we've made that effort. We've uh, acted under the assumption that she is pregnant. We have scheduled medical visits yeah. that she has work to avoid. Mm -hmm. We had one day coordinated with her to pick her up from school, to take her to a medical appointment. Her response was to skip class and leave the campus. So that we no, got there, she was nowhere around. No, her response has been worse than that, actually. She has actually threatened violence against you, right? Yes. Are you aware of this? Um, I've had inklings of that. Her mother discovered her journal and uh, took images of those pages uh -huh. and showed them to me. Um, I don't have copies. I didn't read them uh, completely, but I did see some very dark things in there. Yeah, she says she's ganged up at this point. Yeah and that she's involved with these gangbangers and that at any time that you take her away and that she fails to report in with her gangbanging buddies, that they will automatically go on an assassin run and come and kill you all. I don't believe that for a moment. <laughs> yeah. I think those are the, the dark fantasies of a angry teenage girl. Yeah. Well, according to her, she has been hanging with these gangbangers. She has witnessed them murder, rob, beat people to death. And if that's true, I'm sure she's going to be a real gang favorite when they find out that she is going around telling everybody this uh, and writing it down so it can be given to the authorities and it wouldn't be very hard to find out who this gang is, uh, which then now gives the police probable cause to fall on them like a ton of bricks. So I'm sure she's gonna be a real favorite with that bunch. Yeah, we hope uh, she doesn't cross anybody like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but this, again, she's just not thinking. You know, you don't. Just not. It's true. You, you just don't do that. So exactly what did 15-year-old Marie do when she ran away? Why did she leave? We'll be right back. You are in a very vulnerable position here. If this child decides to fabricate some story, you're gonna be guilty until proven innocent. And later... I'm just saying I'm not denying that I hit the car. Honestly, I'm not denying I hit the car. Case closed. Lassie could prosecute this case. She just admitted it on videotape. Yes, I took your car and ran into stuff with it. My daughter Marie is out of control. It doesn't matter. We say yes or no. Our entire household is walking on eggshells. My daughter is always moody all the time. I'm always scared to approach her. She's like boss in our house. Give me water. We have no influence with this girl. We have no leverage with her. She's holding all the cards. We're back with John and his wife, Mary Beth. Now they say they're frustrated that they can't seem to control their 15-year-old daughter Marie's behavior, which includes stealing, running away, and possibly getting pregnant due to having unprotected sex. If you were looking at this from the outside in, it would seem odd that a child is running roughshod over adults, right? Yes. I mean, until you're in the, <laughs> until you're in the barrel, it, it seems odd, right? 
What's your profession, John? I'm a employee of the federal government, IT specialist. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You have a lot of responsibilities, right? Yes, I do. Uh, what we do is uh, critical to uh, a large segment of our population. Yeah, and, and don't give me any details because you might have to kill me. <laughs> I understand. So I, but I mean, you're very responsible professional and charged with a lot of responsibilities. And uh, but you got a 15 year old jerking you around like you're on a string. And I, I, I want to talk to you separate from you because y you mentioned something earlier and I want to be very selfish on your behalf right now. You are in a very vulnerable position here because if this child decides to go and fabricate some story that you have molested her, beaten her, done all manner of things, the system is designed to believe and protect her. And until otherwise proven, you're not going to be innocent until proven guilty. You're going to be guilty until proven innocent. That is absolutely correct. And that is that has crossed my mind. Uh, she has never done anything like that or threatened to do anything like that, but I know that she could ruin my career and take away my livelihood with a word. Uh, two things are apparent to me. Number one, she's fully capable of doing that. And number two, if I was going to make a list of a thousand guys that would be guilty of what she might uh, accuse you of, I was going to say you would be at the bottom of the list. You wouldn't even be on the list. So I want to go on record right now as saying that she could do a lot of things. She has she's made terroristic threats against you, both to have you murdered. Um, and you don't take those seriously, but we know where her mind goes. Yeah. So for her mind to go here is fully possible. And should that ever come up, I, I, I want you to take a copy of this and hand it to the people that this is something that is not atypical for this kind of a teenager in this kind of a situation. And, and if that ever does come up, you call me second. You call your lawyer first, you call me second. Will do, sir, thank uh, you. Because you shouldn't be living under that kind of fear. There's a lot of scratches. What have you been hitting? I think you're missing the point. <laughs> the conversation is, you stole my car. And later. How are you doing in here? You're not going anywhere, so take it. There's no negotiating, take the test. Right now, she's resisting taking the test. OK, while we're in commercial break, who here has listened to one of my podcasts? Raise your hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> the rest of you I'll see after the show. <laughs> Look, you do want to be part of my podcast community. It's at, at Dr. Phil Podcast. It's on Twitter, Instagram, and Dr. Phil in the blanks. That's P-H-I-L in the blanks on Facebook. And I read all of your comments, including this from Jasmine said, when is the next episode going to be available? I'm on the edge of my seat with this case. What she's talking about is my true crime podcast. And the one I'm doing right now is called The Devil Beside Me, the Chris Watts story, husband, father, killer. You all remember the Chris Watts story, right? He's a family annihilator. He killed his wife, Shan Ann. She was pregnant with their son, Nico. And then he killed his two innocent children, Bella and Celeste. I remember Bella's last words are, you aren't going to do to me, Daddy, what you did to Cece, are you? And it's just horrific what he did. And I'm doing a very deep analysis on what happened. This is in my podcast called Mystery and Murder Analysis by Dr. Phil. It's a series. And in episode five, the final chapter, which is just out now, it's really talking about what Chris's life is like in prison now. He's making bizarre claims that he sees and speaks to his dead family. And there's a new woman in his life. Who would want to date this guy? But there are even more unbelievable revelations to come. 
Episode 5 is available now. Brandy wrote to me on Twitter saying, Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and Nico will always be in my mind and heart. I will never forget their names and faces. I will never stop praying for her family. If you want to hear all the episodes, download and subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app like Stitcher. You can find more at drphilpodcast.com. And when you go there, you'll also find my wife's new podcast as well called I've Got a Secret with Robin McGraw. <laughs> and uh, she has way too much fun on that <laughs> podcast. Let's get back to today's episode. point some things out to you. Look, I believe this about parenting. I think we should avoid confrontation with our children at every possible turn. Always avoid confrontation. You want to influence, redirect, motivate, inspire, do everything you can. Avoid head-to-head -head confrontation at every turn. But if you cannot, do not ever lose. Do not ever lose, not one time, not ever, because when you do, you're working for them. And I, I wanna point something out here, and I, I've, I've pulled these videos out to show you what I'm talking about. She took your car, okay? Now, this is the conversation you, you had about that. Um, so let's take a look at this. There's a lot of scratches. What have you been hitting? I'm saying I'm not denying that in the car. Yeah, because you can't deny okay. it. Okay, now listen, listen to this again here. There's a lot of scratches. What have you been hitting? I think you're missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation is, you stole my car. Yeah. Yeah. And you say, I've done everything. No, you haven't. That's what we call grand theft auto. That's what we call grand theft auto. And when a child says, okay, you can kiss my ass. I'm going to do whatever I want to. Take my phone. Tell me you're going to take my computer. Take the hinges off of my door. I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I want to do because I'm running things around here. Oh, really? You just stole my car. That's Grand Theft Auto. Tell it to the judge. If they want to put it at that level, you have to be able to go to that level. No, Mary Beth had to talk me out of calling the police that night because that was my first inclination. Yeah. And when stopped, we confronted yeah. her at the door upon her return, I said, give me the car keys. You stole my car. <clears throat> I stopped him for calling the police. Let's go on. I'm saying I'm not denying that I the car. Yeah, because you can't. Honestly, I'm not denying I hit the car. Case closed. Lassie could prosecute this case. <laughs> she just admitted it on videotape. Yes, I took your car and ran into stuff with it. I don't want to put your daughter in jail. I don't want your daughter to go to jail. That's your daughter's choice, not yours. You have made every reasonable attempt to handle this inside the family to say, look, we're gonna have to have some rules here and you're gonna have to play by them. And if she tells you to go jump in the damn lake and you're living there with the threat of losing your career and you going to jail, I did a story with a girl months from her age who put her father in jail twice, but she steals your car and wrecks it, which by the way, you're liable for whoever she ran into because you own the car, you have the insurance, and you also have foreseeability because it's happened before and you know it and you did nothing about it. Mary Beth and John sent lots of security cam footage and I'm gonna take a very close look and reveal to them some serious behavior issues that they overlooked. And I'm not talking about their daughter. That's next. <laughs> Can you get a pillow and a blanket, please? We're not leaving. And if she's not taking it, she'll sleep on the floor yeah. in the bathroom. Thank you. There you go.
My daughter's attitude towards me has changed. She no longer calls me Papa. She refers to me by my first name, John. She says I'm her stepfather. One time my daughter was at her friend's house and told that family that she was being abused at home. That family called the police. I'm very afraid of what my daughter might do next. At night, we lock our room. I'm always scared she's going to steal something. I'm afraid of what she might do. She might claim that I touched her inappropriately, and next thing you know, I'm going to be face down on the ground with a cop's knee on the back of my neck. Well, I'm afraid for you, John. John says that he is afraid of his own daughter, and Mary Beth can't sleep because she has to guard the house so her 15-year-old daughter won't escape. Um, now, you know, she said something interesting. She said, the reason I'm laughing all the time when they're telling me something is because they're the ones that should be afraid. Because I've got the power and I got the muscle. They mess with me, they're gonna pay. Now, are these the grandiose rantings of uh, somebody living in fantasy land? Maybe so. There's another video that I wanted to point out. Uh, this is when you were talking to her in bed. A way to make easy money. This guy like will help you make easy money. Sometimes they would find stuff for us and then we would like go sell it for more. And Don't you know to, like, maybe those stuff they give into you are stolen? We knew. We knew. So Again, this wild, wise, and worldly teen has now confessed again on videotape that, yes, I have been in receipt of stolen goods and then fencing them. Those are two independent felonies. On top of Grand Theft Auto, by the way, so she doesn't quite have the leverage here that she thinks she does. But as long as you play this the way you're playing it, she thinks she's holding all of the cards and she's running you two around like she's got a cattle prod. And she's out of control because she has a misperception about how things are going. Now, this is not a good parenting strategy. I, I would never recommend this if you had done some things differently before now. Just so you know, I'm gonna write on this for you, just so you know, out of her behavior, driving a car without a license, that's criminal behavior. Shoplifting, criminal behavior. Selling stolen items, criminal behavior. Fraud with credit card, criminal behavior. That's identity theft, criminal behavior. Failing to go to school, truancy, criminal behavior. Those are all crimes, they're all prosecutable conduct on her part. You've scolded her, you've grounded her, you've put up security cameras, I guess because you just want to watch her commit crimes, I don't know. <laughs> you don't do a damn thing about it, you just say, yeah, there she goes, yeah, here she comes. <laughs> she takes your car, you, you do nothing about it, don't you do that anymore, give me your phone. No. Okay. <laughs> She's just, she's just stonewalling you. That means she's precipitating a confrontation. You, you, you have to take it to the next level. And, and we want her to straighten her life out early before she goes too far down that yeah. wrong path. Yeah, because she's real close to being considered an adult. And once she commits these crimes as an adult, you don't even get a vote. She gets in your car and hits a woman with a, with a baby carriage in a crosswalk, you become observers. You, you lose all control then. Marie told producers that she's not happy with all of her parents' rules. Well, I'm not happy with her behavior. We've got the tail wagging the dog here, and I'm gonna tell you what I think needs to happen next. You're not going anywhere, so take it. There's no negotiating, take the test. Right now, she's resisting taking the test. My daughter Marie had 
essentially everything that we could provide for her. She had her own room, her own television, her own cell phone, sleepovers. She had an expensive party if she wants party. I was the softy parent. I was the teddy bear, the pushover. I'm the mean one. I'm the one like always screaming in the house, yelling. I'm always been the strict one. I'm afraid that my little girl is gone forever. The sweet, happy little girl that I adopted and raised has been replaced by a hostile stranger. Well, 15-year-old Marie told our producers that she doesn't get along with her parents, doesn't want to follow their rules, so she's just basically doing what she wants to do. Now, she's not out here. She's back in the green room. I'm, I'm not going to bring her out here. But I am willing to go chat with her for a few minutes with y'all's permission. Please do. Um, and I, I wouldn't talk to her without your permission. Um, but I'm interested in what her attitude is. After our conversation, I, I think you probably realize you, you've tried everything that you can do in the normal course of, of parenting, but she's gone outside the normal course of behavior. And she's the one dictating what happens at this point. Are you willing to do whatever is necessary to protect her from herself? Yes, yes absolutely. I mean, if it requires pulling the trigger on some of these things and having her held accountable, are you prepared to do that or are you going to go back home and let her continue to do what she's doing? No, we want to help her. And we understand that if nothing changes, we're going to go back to the same old situation we're in now. But I don't want to go back there and talk to her if you, if you don't have the, the appetite for doing what it takes to get her under control. We will. We will try our best to, you know, face the consequences. It's hard, but we will try. Your enthusiasm is underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> we will. She's going to have every opportunity to modulate her behavior and participate. I'll provide family counseling. I'll do everything I can to give her an opportunity to ameliorate these consequences. But if she doesn't, she has to understand when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences and they are dire. You're in danger. outburst under control. Parents have called police over 80 times on their daughter. Now, police have told them to stop calling. These parents allow their daughter to run the house because, well, frankly, they're just scared of her. She's headbutted her mom, broken her nose, and left her completely out of control. She won't tell them if she really is pregnant or not, but she uses it for leverage over them. You don't want to miss this one. That's next Friday. 
And now, check out this one Twitter message that was recently sent to me. Keelan tweeted out to me to say, if I had to pick one TV show to watch for the rest of my life, I would pick yours hands down. I don't know if you would stay with it for the whole life, but I'll give you the shot. Log on to drphil.com and share your thoughts about today's show. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you next time.